In today's video, we continue on with our NHL season preview series. We're still looking at teams in this central division. Today, we review the St. Louis Blues. Will they be able to make progress and get a chance to go back to the playoffs this year? We'll take a look at things and how the team has changed coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we're doing the season preview for the 23-24 season for the St. Louis Blues as we work our way through the NHL Central Division teams. Now, as I mentioned, the Blues are a team who missed the playoffs last year, and they're going to be looking to see if they can climb their way back in. Uh, so they're going to have some tough competition, but we're going to take a look at how things have changed for this team. Uh, in case you're new to this series, essentially we're going to recap last year quickly, take a look at some team and individual stats, take a look at the salary cap, situation uh, how the team has changed so like subtractions additions take a look at some prospects and how this lineup looks like it will uh, be uh, going into the season here so we'll take a look and then answer any questions we feel this team is going to be facing with on their to determine their results so let's first recap the 23 24 season for the st louis blues so last year wasn't great for the Blues. They finished under 500 with a record of 37, 38, and 7 for 81 points. Missing the playoffs last year, uh, they scored 263 goals while allowing 301. That's way too many. Goals 4 ranked 17th in the league where goals against was all the way down to 27th. The power play wasn't fantastic either at 19.3%, uh, which is 22nd best. And the PK, which was really low at 30th. Came in at 72.4. So this team has a lot of work to do to make some necessary improvements. Taking a look at their individual leaders last year, we had Jordan Cairo with 73 points leading the way as a top scorer. Buchnevich had 67 points. Shen and Thomas both had 65. And Justin Falk was a leader from the back end with 50 points. So a lot of these guys... Um, had decent years that we just talked about on the top score list, but many of them did have, you know, small setbacks uh, on their point totals or, you know, like Thomas is a good example, not a bad season, 65 points, but he had more the year before, uh, you know, I think Kairou and Thomas are certainly capable of doing a little bit more as well. And uh, we'll see, but certainly uh, this team um, did not have a great year. I mean, they're a few years removed from winning the Stanley Cup and gone through a, a fair bit of change. So let's take a look at their more recent playoff history, though. Last year, like I said, they missed. But before that, they had made it for the previous four campaigns, including a Stanley Cup victory in 2019. Two years ago, they won a round and went to the second round. And then last year, took a big step backwards and missed now right now they have a 23 man roster set for the upcoming season uh, or at least based on the projected roster and that gives them 293,000 in cap space so it's it's the cap compliant but there's really not much availability to really do anything if they make trades it's going to have to be money in money out type of situations barring any significant injuries uh, now let's take a look at how the team has changed since last year now they, they made a fair bit of deals at the deadline so we've seen the blues team change a, a fair bit at that point including guys like vladimir tarasenko get moved and nico mikola you know and, and others um but obviously it was more of a case of more change in the offseason but not as substantial not returning this year includes um, you know some depth pieces like Logan Brown, Josh Levo, and Matthew Highmore, to name a few. Um, pretty well, majority of the players that ended the season, though, are back. They did add Kevin Hayes, which is really the only notable real addition, per se. Uh, they do have a couple of players going to training camp on a PTO who could earn a contract, like Nick Ritchie, for example. Uh, Andy Walensky is also there on a PTO. But to sign Nick Ritchie... Uh, they're going to have to create, you know, uh, some space. Um, so perhaps they have to scale that 23 uh, roster back a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how they do that, but it's going to it's going to be tra challenging and tricky for sure. Um, as far as prospects that we could see jump into this lineup, I don't know that we're really going to see that this year. Jake Neighbors is technically, I mean, he's still a prospect in a way, but in a way not to me. He's played enough games that he's kind of coming out of that. Uh, you know, designation, but I mean, he's the main young player that you should see get more of a full time role uh, this year. Um, last year, he played about half the season in the NHL, um, and I suspect that's going to continue to build for him. Dalibor Dvorsky, their top prospect, that is expected to play in Europe this year. Uh, will we see Scott Perinovich, you know, make more of an impact at the NHL level? Uh, you know, he's again 
Coming out of prospect territory, he's now 25 after you know going to college for uh, quite a few years there. So, you know, Perinovich is at a point where it's like a make or break campaign. Um, but these defenders on the Blues, like they've had uh, a lot of guys that have no move clauses and are making a lot of money, so they kind of have to play them. And it's kind of blocked out some players like Perinovich from really getting more of a full-time role now of course in every video i do take a look at everybody's uh, teams and look at some bounce back and breakthrough players as far as bounce back goes i'm looking at two main players and it's tory krug and jordan bennington tory krug didn't have i wouldn't call last year terrible for him but it wasn't great um he could certainly be better offensively right now his contract hasn't aged the greatest and uh, doug armstrong the gm was trying to move him this summer and unfortunately I ran into uh, some blocked deals because of Krug's protection in his contract, and he was able to say no, but they did have a deal lined up with Philadelphia that Krug prevented from happening. Jordan Bennington also really, when he came on, bursted onto the scene in, in 2019 and took this team to the playoffs and then to the Stanley Cup, and it's been year after year after year after year of regression since then. Uh, he's never really duplicated that. Um, so some kind of call him a one-hit wonder. I don't know if it's that to that level i mean he's still been uh you know had some good games good seasons but it's at a point where it's like he needs to he needs to bounce back or he's going to work his way slowly out of this league i mean if he didn't have a longer term contract uh, he's lucky he signed when he did to be honest because uh, and he only got that because of the stanley cup that's my take on jordan bennington i don't really think he's as good as his contract um, for the contract as he should be, but he did get them a cup. And, you know, teams tend to overpay players when they win Stanley Cups. It's just that simple. But he's been regressing ever since he bursted onto the scene. And the stats don't lie in that regard. So I, if you're a Bennington fan, I'm not bashing him because I hate him. It's just facts. I just look at the numbers. They are not kind year after year since he came onto the league. And that took the starter's job at that point, which was Jake Allen's uh, spot with the Blues. Uh, breakthrough candidates this year, I think Jake Neighbors. Like I said, he's not really a prospect, but still kind of in that category. He's played enough, though. Usually when you've hit like 40 games, I don't really think of them as prospects anymore. They're just a young player. Um, but ultimately, Jake Neighbors, I think, plays a more of a full-time role and breaks through and has a, a, like a more full campaign this year. I think that would be important to the Blues, having a chance to make improvements. Because, like I said, looking at the subtractions and additions, this is largely the same group. So when you had a poor season and you didn't really meet your expectations, you missed the playoffs, and there's really hardly any change, it's kind of hard to accept the fact that you're probably like, how, how are you going to show the, the improvements? You didn't really do anything to make the team better. You brought in Kevin Hayes. Okay. Kevin Hayes had his, you know, decent year in Philadelphia, but he was also getting big minutes early on. Like he racked up a lot of points early in the season. He was playing first line minutes. He's not going to do that in St. Louis. Is Kevin Hayes going to, you know, be able to have a 60, 70 point campaign with the blues this year? I have my doubts, to be completely honest. I mean, can he be a good player for them and contribute in the way they're hoping? I think so. Um, but he's expected to have more of a depth role. He's going to probably be a number three uh, center, like a third-line player. So, you know, if he can get them 40, 45 points and do, you know, what he does, then they're going to be okay with that. But, you know, at the end of the day, is that really going to make them significantly better? I just don't know that it does. It doesn't move the needle a whole heck of a lot for me without seeing improvements from the players that are still there. Because, like I said, this team is largely the same. So let's look at the projected lineup right now. Uh, this is, comes from courtesy of dailyfaceoff.com. Um, the lineups that they have projected right now show the first line of Thomas with Kairou and Buchnevich. Uh They have a second line of Braden Shen, Brandon Saad, and Kasperi Kapanen. They have a third line of Hayes with Jake Neighbors and Jake Verana. And then a fourth line of Sunkfist with Sammy Lay and uh, Torpchenko. So that's, uh, like I said, largely your same lineup. You throw in Kevin Hayes and there's really the only the only change. And the back end's pretty much identical. You get Letty and Pareko, Krug and Falk, Scandella, Bortuzzo. Biddington and Joel Holfer will make up your goaltending tandem. So again... Like, very little change on this roster. Doug Armstrong was rumored heavily all summer to want to shake up the blue line. But the problem is, like I've said numerous times, he's handed out way too much trade protection in his contracts. And he's given all his, the top four defenders 
no move clauses or or some either no full no move or a lot of teams that can be blocked and it's just it's really handcuffed things so the big question for me is can they get better goaltending with the same duo i mean hofer can likely take steps and i, I do wonder this year if hofer steals the job if he can outplay bennington that would not shock me but bennington needs to be better i mean even if he's not stanley cup bennington at that level he needs to be a lot closer to that than what he was in the last year or two or they're not really going to take big steps. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not getting to the goaltending, it's tough. It's really tough to win a lot of games. Uh, they have a new captain now, of course. Uh, they just named Braden Shen captain today. Uh, good choice, long-term contract, hard worker, leads by example. I like a lot of what Braden Shen brings to the table, so it was a good pick. Robert Thomas, uh, Colton Pareko, and Justin Falk will all be alternate captains for the Blues this year. So they've got their leadership group in place before camp, which I think is uh, good. I mean, um, as I mentioned, like, you know, can they really move up in the standings and can you really expect different results when you have largely the same player personnel? What adjustments are we going to see Craig Berube and the coaching staff make with only really one roster player really different that's it i mean neighbors will play more full time and other than that like it's the same people so what changes are they going to make when you have one of the worst pks in the league you gave up almost one of the highest numbers of goals against like defensively this team was horrible last year you know look at the metrics um and they and they had trouble scoring on top of that and I don't know that they they can probably make some offensive improvements just by, you know, I guess getting these guys playing a little bit closer to their max capabilities. Uh, they did have some good pickups later in the year from Kapanen and Verano. They did seem to pick, like, one after they were picked up by St. Louis to fit well and um, contribute it. So we'll see if a full season of that will help. Um, but, yeah, like I, I don't know what to expect from St. Louis. I have a hard time believing that they're going to really be able to move up in the standings. And the only way it's going to be possible is significant improvements with the same people. And they have the same, mostly the same coaches, same personnel. What are they going to do different to make things better? Now, if you look back a couple of years before that, there, there was a lot more success. But they're in a tough division. You've got, you know, the, the Dallas team is really, uh, really strong. Minnesota's really strong. The Avalanche look to be they're still contenders and trying to win another Stanley Cup. Uh, I think Winnipeg is going to be a little better than they were last year as well. Like they, they, to me, could be a team that maybe has improved a bit. Um, you know, it's it's not going to be easy by any means uh, to move up in the standings here. So you got Chicago and you've got Arizona that are still very much rebuilding. But even Arizona, I don't know how much improvement they're going to be. But I mean. They are going to be better for sure because, I mean, they actually added a decent amount of NHL quality talent instead of stripping it down further, which is what a lot of people thought they were going to do. So we'll see. I think the Blues are going to have a tough time, probably fifth place in the division at best, likely out of the playoffs unless Jordan Bennington goes off and becomes the Jordan Bennington of 2019, which is it's hard to imagine that happening after four seasons of decline. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Can the Blues bounce back and get back in the playoff picture? And we'll discuss further down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.